Welcome to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Wattman. A story begins tonight with our very special guest, TV and movie star, Erica Elenick. Erica began her acting career at the age of 10, starring in numerous productions for television, film, commercials, and theater. Her first film role was in 1982, a little feature called E.T. the Extraterrestrial by Steven Spielberg. Her mother was very determined for Erica to have a normal childhood and finish school, so Erica worked a couple of jobs a year throughout childhood and adolescence until after graduating high school. And it was directly after this that Erica joined the original cast of Baywatch and stayed on the show for the first two years. She decided to leave the show after it changed direction and so began a very successful film career. And Erica starred in such films such as Under Siege, The Beverly Hillbillies, and many, many others. Erica's latest work includes several new movies coming out this year such as Meant to Be and Holiday Spin. And on top of all this, this busy mother has a new book coming out titled, What Do You Do If You Lose Your Lullabaloo? It's an endearing children's book full of love and direction. And I believe you will find from listening to Erica that she is also full of love and direction for herself, for her daughter, and a lot for others. Our musical guest is Heather Lee with her beautiful song, Second Chances. So please sit back, relax. And enjoy the show. Welcome, Erica. How are you today? Well, thank you for that lovely intro. I am very good today. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to talk to you. This has just made my day. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. So how is everything going where you are? Has it been pretty smooth sailing for today? Smooth sailing for today? You know, my last few days have been really just busy, 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 hectic, busy. So it's all good. It's all good stuff, and so I'm, I'm super grateful, but just kind of one of those not had a chance to sort of sit down and catch a breath of days, you know. Um, on I like to shout out little tweets in the morning um, on Twitter, and usually I'll sort of name the day of the week. And um, I think I named yesterday, Tuesday, Too Much To Do Tuesday, <laughs> or Time <laughs> To Do Tuesday. Just, yeah, I, I, um, it's been great, though. It's been great. I volunteer, and I do a lot of work with my daughter's school. And nice. um, so that, among all my other stuff that I have going on, you know, it's just been kind of keeping me running, running, running. But it's been great. It's been all good stuff. No complaints. Nice. I like that. Um, I follow you on Twitter, and so I know those those little shout outs that you do. Thank you. I follow you on Twitter too. Aww. <laughs> yes, you know I I do try. I like sometimes I can't you know do the morning shout out. I like to start off the day with a positive thought, a good vibe, just something. Um, only every every once in a great while will you catch me off cranky and I'll put out a little something more, you know, along the lines of com- my complaint for the morning, but generally I try to put out something really positive and yeah. and uh, and hopefully, you know, if, if it inspires someone, they'll pay it forward. And that, that tends to be actually the tweets that I get back. I get back some really nice um, tweets from people saying, thank you so much. And, you know, I've started looking forward to the positive notes for the day and, and then I'll get some great ones back. You know, from other people that um, it could be a quote or some great thing they read somewhere, whatever it is, or their own thoughts. And so it kind of pays for this really good energy. And I love that. Oh, that's nice. I love um, spreading the love and light to people and then getting it back. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about positive energy, isn't it? It absolutely is. And, you know, also, too, when you get something good from someone, be it a smile or an inspiring quote or just something, pay it forward. You know, if you get a good tip, I love if I get great information from someone. It could be about anything. I will pass it forward. Just keep moving it on, you know, um, that old pay it forward kind of concept, I think, is so important. And that just does keep the flow of good energy going. So, I yeah. agree. Nice. I like that. I like that. Um, you started acting around 10 years old, correct? Correct. And what made you want to start acting at such a young age? You know, I actually didn't really. I wanted to, (laughs) I know that sounds so funny. Um, I wanted to be a lot of different things. My, I, my uncle who, um, is no longer with us, but he, uh, Eddie Carroll, um, was the, the voice of Jiminy Cricket since 1973. Wow. 
And my, I have uncles that are one is in the, you know, he has his own uh, ad agency. And my father for a long time, um, he's a lawyer now, but really wanted to sort of follow in the footsteps of, of his older brother, Eddie. And he, um, it's sort of a long story. I don't want to bore you, but in a nutshell, oh, was boring. dating someone. <laughs> <laughs> he was dating someone, uh, a lovely, lovely lady. Um, and, uh, she worked for a film company. So whenever they needed extras or they were making films for tra- like training films, you know, if an employee is going to go work at a company, uh-huh. they needed to, um, have a trainee film. My father would sort of ask my sister and I, who's four and a half years younger, she was just tiny, you know, if we right. wanted to be in these things. And the three <laughs> of us sometimes would go do that. It just sort of snowballed from there. You know, he asked me if, I had any interest in getting pictures done and sort of pursuing this. And I said, okay, you know, for me, I think at 10, 11 years old, I wanted to be a singer, a dancer, a model, a truck driver, a parapsychologist, <laughs> and a lawyer. Um, yeah, I was kind of a funny kid. So, But it's funny because acting wasn't really one of the things that I, you know, had set out to do that young. It definitely entertainment in, in, in some aspect but so it just sort of happened that way you know i sort of fell into it yeah very cool did i hear you say parapsychologist i did wow (laughs) yeah 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 i was a strange kid i had a lot of um you know i've been a kind of on a spiritual quest pretty much since i was about 10 or 11 years old and i mean just reading and studying kind of everything that i could get my hands on eastern western whatever just nice. really always interested in sort of all of that. So, nice. um, yeah. I have a very yeah. strong background in that. So whenever you mentioned, I was like, wow, really? So oh, I'm cool. impressed. Then I'll have to hear about that. That's, yes. that's cool. That's intriguing. <laughs> um, now, who were your inspirations growing up at such a young age then? Hmm. In terms of, you mean in the acting world? Yeah. Or just like in general, you know, I... Well, actually, just in general, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I I think that I, I don't know if I had one, you know, sort of role model or anyone in particular. I loved very much um, dancing and, and started dancing when I was really little. And unfortunately, I quit when I was a teenager. But I was always inspired by going to dance shows and, you know, to dance recitals. And now I have right. a little girl who's already done two recitals. And, but I was always sort of creating, I will say, creating, making shows up at home um, with my little sister and putting on, always putting on singing and dancing shows, either for the neighborhood kids or for our parents or... You know, um, and taking pictures doing that, our, you know, our, our family taking pictures doing that. So I think I was constantly creating. I was writing songs and, and poetry and just doing things like that. But silly, you know, just private little, you know, I think I wrote a script when I was 10. God, I remember one of the girls' names, one of the characters' names was Blair. Blair? <laughs> I remember <laughs> being 10, 11 years old and writing this script. Was this and- during the Facts of Life's time? I know. Well, hello. <laughs> that was the inspiration because that show was huge when I it was. was. So, I love that. So wasn't that a great show? It was. Of course, Blair and I think maybe Brooke. Yep. And I loved. I was a big Brooke Shields fan. Um, yeah, me too. So I remember. You know, I was just constantly, constantly expressing in so many different sort of mediums. I guess so many di- just different different ways um but that i constantly was just outside you know uh, with a huge imagination and um that was pretty much it i mean i grew up with i love lucy and the brady bunch and i dream of Jeannie and all those great shows but i don't think i literally had one actor per se that i was you know just really into i think i had my little girl crushes and yeah <laughs> i think Scott the Bayo. inspiration <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, Lee Garrett was a big one. Oh, okay, one. cool, cool. Yeah, well, and I got to work with Scott um, mm-hmm. on uh, Charles in Charge when I was definitely much older than 10. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I think the inspiration just kind of kept feeding itself. You know, one thing sort of led to another, and that would inspire me in terms of my own kind of creating. So that was, probably sounds funky, but that's kind of the way it was. 
Well, you do so many things, like you just mentioned, um, so many different activities and, and things that you get into. But you've always been known for, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you've always been known for being very beautiful and being in shape. Um, well, thank you. What a terrible thing to say. That, <laughs> I know. <laughs> bad, Brian. Bad, Brian. But, um, no, that's, that's <laughs> lovely. Thank you. How do you stay in shape so well? It has never been easy, but it's funny, and I laugh with my mom about this all the time. You know, every five years, I think we all sort of turn a corner in terms of everything, but especially, you know, aesthetically with our bodies. You know, whatever you're interested seems to distribute itself in different areas than maybe it did five years prior and this seems to constantly change and especially after you have a child but for me it's like you know you always hear especially women say god you know what was I complaining about when they look at pictures you know of themselves when they were 20 and they were like oh, I was gorgeous and now but I think we we all do that and I think we constantly do it so you can be 20 you can be 30 then you're 40 then you're 50 I think we're always saying that and so for me, I now notice how easy it was compared to how it is now to stay in shape. I have always been active, always. I've always, I've had different um, kinds of training over the years. Um, at one point in my life, I was married to um, a gentleman who was Mr. North America and who was a pro bodybuilder uh -huh. and then, um, you know, got his masters at Duke in nutrition and he really I will say he knows his stuff uh, oh, tremendously yeah. well and, and yeah and he works with people who are um, you know physically challenged and I don't just mean um, in terms of weight I mean with you know health issues and so he really did understand um, how how it all works in terms of the science and how to how to lose weight for, as a lifestyle change and really successfully no matter what your needs were um, so I learned a lot, you know, from that period of my life and from him. And, um, yeah, so I've had all kinds, you know, boot camp training. I've boxed. I've, um, right now, I've really, like, I get bored very easily. You're not going to find me in a gym anymore. I used to work out at the gym all the time. I would be in Venice Beach, Gold Gym, or, mm -hmm. you know, various different places. And I just have to be outside if possible. Um I like weight training. I love to run. Right now, I, I live near a very steep hill that's outside um, and surrounded by, you know, all kinds of bunny rabbits and there's hawks Aww. and chipmunks and everything <laughs> running. I just love it. And so I will, I'll, I have weights that you can actually put um, around your ankles for your legs oh, or yeah. you can put them on your arms, right? So they're like right. kind of, they're just Velcro. So I'll strap those on and I'll go up and down that hill um, two, three times and run and um, and then good old fashioned calisthenics. You know, using your own body weight push ups, sit ups. Uh, I use the exercise ball. Those are the Swiss balls are really good for doing um, crunches. And I mix it up, Brian, all the time or else I'm no. really bored. But I have to do it. Is the point? I I have to do it. And I think the biggest struggle for me is food because I love food. I am a, yeah, I'm a foodie. Oh my God. Like, Me too. You know, I I do. I really appreciate food. I like cooking. I like baking. I love eating. And so I have to work for it, you know. Um, I try, and I will obviously during the holidays, you know, there's always those times that are my weak points where I sort of <laughs> fall off, so to speak. But exactly. I, you know, off the program. But I try. My goal is, to eat really well five days a week and then I relax on the weekend and honestly if I wanted to get ahead and not maintain I would probably have to cut that back to one kind of cheat day like you know have a have your relaxed day on say a Saturday where you just don't think about what you eat you eat what you want but then you're right back on it again Sunday through Friday again and that coupled with training is what does it for me I love that I love the fact that you're an outside type of person for fitness and you stick with basic body weights and um, other other things that you do, like calisthenics and stuff, because I highly encourage people to get active and get outside. It is so much better yeah. than being inside a weight room. And then the other thing is and is the fact that uh, you take cheat days on the weekends. I love doing that. Yeah. My cheat day is Sunday. And so it's like the Lord, yeah. I rest I rest on the 7th, you know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of one of those things. It. And you don't train, you don't think about anything, you relax. And I think for me... 
being totally honest, it all goes to hell on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being really honest, you know, my daughter and I love to have, my daughter is six and a half, we love to have our movie night. So we get kettle corn Aww. and we get great candy. And come Friday, we order a movie on pay-per-view. And, you know, although in school now, because she's my big first grader now, she gets real busy, and then she has two classes that are extracurricular art and dance after schools, and pretty tired. So sometimes we'll shift that to Saturday, but we get that party started at our house on Friday. No. So <laughs> come Sunday, I really have to dial it back, or else I've worked hard all week and kind of just put it all back you know, in two days, which I can absolutely have the ability to do. But it's something I always have to maintain. Here's the thing that I know and I'm really grateful for. Um, I gained a lot of weight with my pregnancy. This was a long time coming, having my child. It was a long road. I had to go through a lot of things. Um, and God bless all the people out there that have to do that who want children so badly because it's really hard. I did not have fertility treatment um, in terms of in vitro, but I, you know, I absolutely had to go see specialists and just do the work. And right. um, so when, and I wanted a child since, oh my goodness, my mom says since I was a kid, you know, that's all <laughs> I've ever talked about. And honestly, ask me what my one biggest dream in my entire life has ever been. No joke. That's to be a mom. Aw, I like that. Oh, absolutely. So... For me, I enjoyed everything about my pregnancy. I did yoga. I ate healthy. How many servings are you supposed to have of this? And then I would go to McDonald's. I had my feet <laughs> up. I enjoyed myself. I just loved it. I put on a lot of weight. And um, I took it off really quickly. I did do a show to Celebrity Fit Club, which was really fun because it just took it all off in literally like eight weeks. But I'm very blessed that I got to do that because, you know, I otherwise I don't know how long it might have taken me on my own because you were provided so many things so it was just such a blessing but um, but I I always I've never had a weight problem you know throughout my life growing up but um, knowing how hard it was once I gained that pregnancy weight you know to to lose it um, like I said it was done quickly but that's because it was like intense I just tr I really try to watch you know I don't feel good for me mentally when um, I don't feel like I am like good in my skin and I am not a skinny girl you can look at any bit of footage on me you will never see me looking skinny it's just not me uh, and I, I, I like I'm healthy by the grace of God I, I like bustle tone I'm a, I like how I'm like healthy and if anything there's plenty of shows where I've probably been five or ten pounds over what my body my frame needs to carry um you have the but, Marilyn Monroe look. You have the perfect hourglass shape. Well, which is my thank honest you. Opinion. I think it looks that. great on Thank you. Um, I just, you know, it's it, it's funny because things have changed so much in that department since I had my little girl that some things are way better, actually, and then some things are much harder in terms of my weight and distribution and stuff. But anyway, enough ramble on my part about <laughs> weight. But I just, I have to work for it, and I do. I work really diligently, um, and I will never stop doing that just for my peace of mind as well as, you know, just liking the way I, I want us to look. But um, it's really more for my brain. Part of what the other thing quickly I was going to say, why I also like to train outside, is um, it's it's sort of a double whammy, whammy. When I can, it can also be really spiritual because of, like I said, I'm also hiking. So oftentimes oh, I I'll, I, oh, I just, I'll put on the, you know, Native American music and uh just breathe and not think so it's kind of i, I get a two for one special <laughs> <laughs> some very good friends of mine are um native americans and one of them actually has her own music cd so i have to uh message you the her cd and see if you want to listen to it so it's actually oh i love that it's her singing um playing the drums and everything else and i actually listen to it a lot talking about spirituality i, I listen to it a lot whenever i meditate and mm -hmm. it's absolutely beautiful so oh wonderful i love that um some of the TV shows that you've been on, and you've been on so many of those, um, I lost count somewhere around 13. I, I'd stop counting because there were so many of them. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> if you could just talk about a couple real quick. Um, sure. Between like Baywatch and CSI Miami, and you actually did a stint on Desperate Housewives, which I think you're a great fit for that show as well. 
But can we talk a little bit about those shows? Because you're also very well known for Baywatch. Sure, yeah. Fire away. So, okay, you're this beautiful woman on the beach with, you know, the rest of the beautiful people and everything else. Um, it's dramatic, it's suspenseful, but what are some funny behind the scenes? Can you, can you mention anything there? Because there had to have been some. Oh, gosh. You know, I will say one of my fondest, fondest memories about Baywatch was the cast and crew because we were all one big family, really. And when I, when I started on the show, you know, we did it, I don't know if you remember, but way back when there used to be movies of the week on the networks were big. Sunday night, yeah. movies of the week. And usually the networks, you know, NBC, ABC, CBS would all have their own deal. And Baywatch was a two-hour movie. Um, back to our pilot. If it did well, it would be a series. And that's kind of the way we started. So when we were on NBC, it was like the most conservative network at the time. And, you know, everything we did was standard issued by the book in order to get part of our sponsorship, too. You know, so right. from the lifeguards and the things that we were able to um, have afforded to us on the show. So uh, it was really very much like you know, oftentimes you'll find or you'll hear um, in the police force or, in, you know, um, the fire department or it's like big brother, brotherhood, if you will, sisterhood, brotherhood and sisterhood. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot like that with the lifeguards and and, uh, and the cast and the crew of Baywatch. So a lot of joking, a lot of practical joking going <laughs> on, a lot. I mean... Crazy stuff. And I will say David Hasselhoff is a huge practical joker. So, is he? You know, I heard oh that. my gosh. <laughs> so, so, so funny. And so many times, you know, you would be there in one of the moments where you might have kind of a tear jerker moment and it would be your close up, you know, and you're working really hard on getting to where you need to be and just at that moment, you know, right. David would pop up behind the camera and do some like horrifying face and make <laughs> you completely blow it or literally as you're about to walk on camera, pull your, like pull a piece of your hair from the, completely blow like your entrance, just, <laughs> just things like that. You know, we had a lot of that, so many, way too many to even remember, uh, but just a lot of fun. Now, I heard that you guys actually shot during the winter time. Instead of during the summertime, because you had to shoot off season. How difficult was it to shoot during the winter time? Very difficult. When we first started the show, you know, they were figuring out a lot of stuff. And when you're first starting a show, too, you have certain deadlines. Um, you know, we're trying to get a show off the ground, and 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 before it sort of comes into its own, you know, you got those time frames, and you know, you don't get to say have as much say so as you'd like until a show is successful. You know what I mean? So. Exactly. We shot in the wintertime in January, and I'll tell you, I remember one day, I'm pretty sure it was Billy Warlock and I were in the water, and our lips were so blue. We were so clearly so cold and shivering with blue lips that when they saw the footage, they really couldn't even use it. And I think it was through those sort of trials and tribulations where, you know, you start kind of piecing together, maybe we need to get a warehouse and a water tank for some of the stuff. Um, that's just close up in the water or maybe, you know, just to make shooting easier. And then, you know, we had huge lights, huge kilos to make it look sunny. And we were supposed right. to be sweaty. So you would have the <laughs> makeup ladies come at you with water sprayers. And it would be cold water because they couldn't keep those things hot. You would try sometimes. There's no way. So you're out there in a bathing suit. It's winter. It's like 50 degrees, and oh they're spraying God. you with cold water. And then you got to jump in and out of the ocean, and then the wind is blowing. And <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that would that would be my my least favorite memory. If I had to have one, that would be it. It was it was hard. I will say it was hard. <laughs> It would seem like they'd have to give you hazards pay or something like that. It's just. <laughs> huh. I must have missed that. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> because, um, yeah, a lot of times, obviously, the show is about the beach and during summertime and all kinds of um, places that are around water um, and the, the stunts and things that you guys do. And so when I heard that you guys filmed during wintertime, I couldn't imagine that it was it was pleasant to do. But the fact that everybody pulled it off so well, and obviously the show is such a hit. Um, has such a huge following. I'm, I'm a fan of the show as well. But um, to be able to act and perform in situations like that, in circumstances like that, a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't know this about myself until that show. And it, it held to be true on other 
on, a, on other projects that I've worked on. But when I get cold, for, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's that my, you know, your, sometimes your mouth chatters or whatever, but right. my tongue, like, curled. It, 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 I couldn't speak without sounding like I was from the South. Hey. <laughs> I know that sounds really bizarre, and I'm not a crazy lady, I promise. But I have literally had been in ADR sessions. That's where we go. Um, for the people who don't know, you know, when you have to fix the sound on a project that you've filmed, you'll go uh-huh. and you'll do a looping or an ADR session to um, to do that. Where most of the time, you'll look at the screen, you'll see the footage, and you have to match and redo what you did with your voice, the audio. Right. And oftentimes, the foot I would sound like I was putting on some kind of a southern accent and I all, I had a couple of different occasions directors ask me are you where are you from and I just <laughs> say here California I was cold <laughs> I don't know why but it absolutely affected my speech because your whole body tenses up you know it's like when you get like you kind of grit your teeth for some people but for me for whatever reason my my something odd happened my mouth I was freezing, and I always sounded like I was from the South. Little, little fun fact. Like, well, that's <laughs> little pretty little cool. <laughs> I actually Very live weird. in the South, so I, I kind of like the Southern accent. So the fact that you actually had one, even though you didn't mean to, I think that's that's kind of sexy. That's kind of cool. funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, my my speech teacher a lot of times would tell me to enunciate, and she was mm-hmm. she would always say enunciate, Brian, enunciate. But whenever I get around some of my friends. And, you know, we're having a beer on the back of the truck, out in the mud pit or whatever else, just having fun on, on, on a good off day. It's uh, the southern drawl comes out, and I start talking right. like this, and it's just real slow to hold a conversation. And then everybody right. tells me, like, Brian, you done southerned up again. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, that's, you know, it's just part of me, so that's all good. You know, I think wherever you go, that absolutely happens. I, I moved away, and I lived in Canada for almost a decade. And when I came back home here to California, my O's, certainly had their own their own way because when I was around my family from Canada that lives out here now, they would catch it. I had no idea. I, I my about, you know, and story and that all came out. I think wherever you there are affectations pretty much about, you know, wherever you you, you live in terms of um uh, the way that you speak. It's funny, God bless him, but uh, Robert Easton was a brilliant dialect coach and actor. Um, and he was a dialect coach for the Beverly Hillbillies. And um, he was so good. He could literally tell you different parts of the valley. Like we live uh, out here is the San Fernando Valley. And, um, and he would be able to tell you quadrants of the valley and, and literally pick up on the difference in the tone. Oh, and, my God. Yeah, just uh, incredible. Really talented ear. Um, but yeah, I think we all do that. You know, we hang out someplace long enough. Yeah, we just Or kinda... get cold or eat pop- <laughs> popsicle, I guess, for that matter, then. <laughs> exactly. Now, talking about the South, you and um, Southern accents, it's interesting you mentioned so the, the Beverly Hillbillies because I want to talk right. about a couple of the movies. And you've been, again, um, I stopped counting around 26, and I think you have like different movies of the week, eight different movies of the week, and there's so many of them. Um, but two of them that I really love was um, Under Siege, which you actually filmed here in Mobile, Alabama, where I am. Right. And right. Um, so you got a chance to spend time in the South. And I tried to actually get on that movie. Because uh, I've been on the USS Alabama many, many times, and I tried to right. get onto the movie as an extra, but um, it was a little late. I had another friend get on there, and I filmed on that one for another movie. But um, anyway, I didn't get a chance to get up there and, and meet you guys or anything else, but you know, I wish I had. Um, can we talk about that movie? Because that was kind of a, a big movie for you, do you think? Oh, gosh, yeah. That was just uh, amazing. Just such a great it – was, it was a tough shoot. You know, we were out there for – 13 weeks, I think, so, you know, a little over three months, and um, so it was a long shoot, and the hours were kind of nutty. Sometimes I'd get to work at noon and not have my first shot until 4 a.m. the next day. I mean, <laughs> it was, um, yeah, but it was amazing, oh, my gosh, to watch Tommy Lee Jones and Gary Busey work together. I, I really was just mesmerized by, you know, so much of what you saw in that film. A lot of it was just completely improvised by things that they came up with and just really? watching them yes and just watching them work off of each other was such a uh, it was such an honor for me you know and and 
uh, to to see the finished product, Andy Davis did such a great job, I think, in that film, the, the director. Um, I was just stunned. I, I, I thought it was a brilliant, really good movie, really good movie. Very entertaining and, and kept you on the edge of your seat there. And just such good actors, you know, being able to, to work with them. It was just great. Yeah, I didn't realize how brilliant, um, just reiterate what you were saying, I didn't realize how brilliant Tommy Lee Jones was as an actor and Gary Busey until those until I saw that movie, and and you know I got to give props to Steven Seagal because I study martial arts and you know love him as martial arts skills and everything else, but um, just the combination of that whole movie and how it was set up and e- even the storyline was kind of cool and stuff like that. Um, it was it was really cool and it was you know a yeah. lot of us here in, in the the city was you know super excited that you guys filmed it here and we're always hoping you know that you guys would come back and film you know. Something else, but it, it took off into a train and a plane and, and whatever else. But. Yes, it went on, yes, <laughs> no it went on and on, then it's been a cab, and I, I don't know what, what's next. But, you know, one thing I love, one of my fondest memories of Mobile, Alabama, was where we stayed is right there where, you know, kind of the ocean comes into the bay, sort of. It was the most bizarre thing yes. to see a dolphin, literally a dolphin, where we were staying because it was more like a bay. I mean, it, you, you didn't have a sense of feeling the ocean where we were. And then I think about a hundred yards from there, an alligator. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so bizarre. I was not going to wait a minute. I really can see right now. Why? Why is there a dolphin to my left and an alligator to my right? <laughs> so funny. And then our one of our, our guys on the crew, not very smart, decided he thought it would be really funny to take a whole chicken and there was an alligator on the embank like on the embankment and yeah. he went down towards the embankment waving this chicken. Oh my god. <laughs> I can only laugh. You've never heard a man run so fast and scream so loud because that alligator you don't realize how fast they move. They are fast. They are fast. And he found that he screamed <laughs> all the way down like rat. Didn't catch him or the chicken, thankfully, but oh my goodness, so funny. Oh my goodness. Well, okay, so at Beverly Hillbillies. Now, yeah. that's another one that you played a good southern accent with. Um, mm. And you seem like you had a really fun time in this movie. Was it as fun making it as it was watching it? Out of all the projects that I've done since I started acting at age 10 and I'm 43, that was my most favorite. Really? Absolutely my most favorite, yeah. And hands down in every way. Um, just enjoyed it thoroughly. You know, I loved the show as a kid, watching the show. Um, Penelope Spirits was just a, a great, great director, a really strong director. And the cast was just phenomenal. I went to work oh, wow. every day, a sponge, you know, just in awe, trying to take in all oh, these talented people. I felt so honored to, good Lord, I mean, Horace Leachman, Lily Tomlin, Dabney Coleman, and, you know, all, there are so many more people, and I mean, the cast is huge, and they're all brilliant. You know, Rob Schneider, and Peter Bader, and Leah Thompson, and I'm sure I'm, you know, um, leading out a, a ton of Yeah, it was really, star-studded. It was definitely yeah, star It was just star-studded. There were so many great people. Um, yeah, just just really so much fun and, and fun to play that character. Um, a little challenging, you know, it was really important when you're playing someone that was so well loved by so many people before you, it, it's a challenge because you want to keep that character current a little bit. You know, we had to right. kind of keep that, those characters sort of modern and at the same time, there, you want to keep it as true to the original, um, character and then endearing so whatever you know you whatever flavors then you put on it you need to make sure is is uh you know endearing to to everybody so i mean it was definitely challenging um but yeah it was so much fun i love animals and uh was almost attacked by probably every animal (laughs) in that movie no i'm being sarcastic but i will say i definitely was challenged i had one scene in the very beginning of this movie where um, I have to jump into the pond and I swim. And first of all, we shot that up in Northern California. Wait, wait, did you say pond? Pond. 
not a female pond, a regular pond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I had to jump in and I had to swim. Well, I have never experienced water that cold in my life. Not ever. even on Baywatch? Not even on Baywatch. This oh was goodness. mountain water. And it was, <laughs> I don't remember what time of the year it was we were filming this, but it was in Northern California. So the, the camera is across the pond with a long limb. And the idea is that I have to jump into the water, swim, come out, and basically pet a deer. Now, unbeknownst okay. to the audience or to the camera, we had little, um, I forget what, I want to say, I, I want to say marshmallows. I know that's what we were feeding the raccoons, but some kind of a little something, a treat that the deer liked that was kind of planted, and it probably wasn't marshmallows, and I don't remember what it was, but planted right. behind the reeds. So they call action. I jump into the water. The water was so <laughs> cold. I, I actually, I lost my breath. That had never happened to me before. If you've ever had the wind knocked out of you yeah. from being hit with a ball or something, that is exactly, and I'm being literal, what happened to me. And I was scared to death because I couldn't catch my breath. But I had to keep swimming, keep looking, same you know, character. calm and serene, same character. So then I finally managed to get myself out of the pond and I grabbed it. I kind of discreetly grabbed the little treat behind the reed and I get up. And as I'm getting out of the water, I hear this really odd, high pitch sound. <laughs> it, it, I notice it's coming from the deer and I'm like thinking this is not good. And <laughs> I'm getting closer to the deer, but I'm not going to stop now after everything you know, I'm cut after right, going in that water. Right. So I'm going towards the deer and I'm lifting up my hand and the deer is getting louder and louder and finally the deer rears up. Oh, no. And wants to start like pummeling me. Oh my god! <laughs> so the trainers I did not. I've obviously backed up. But the trainer came running out of the tent that was, you know, um, parked <laughs> off behind the bushes, and then they called cut, and everything was fine. No deers or actors were hurt, but it was <laughs> really one of those moments. And I had a few of those moments uh, in in this movie with the, the raccoon and raccoons and possum and but you know what honestly nothing went nothing was like it was just all a little warning <laughs> so <laughs> i had my little animal stories but i i just had fun i love animals and i was so fortunate to get to work with so many different kinds it was actually a, a, a quite the education for me i was gonna um, i was gonna say because plain ellie may who loves animals on on the show on the movie yeah um it seemed like you were very natural around them Love, 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 love. The orangutan that I worked with was more professional than probably any one of us. I remember we were holding hands, getting ready to shoot the sequence, and it, we were um, not on camera at the moment. They were just fixing a light or something, and so my, I was talking with a couple of the other actors, and I feel this tug on my arm, and I look down, and the orangutan looks at me and puts his head up straight. Like, stop talking and stand at attention, please, because we're getting ready to roll. Oh, no, and he I, didn't. I just went in my place by a monkey. <laughs> like a boss. Oh, my goodness. Yes, as a matter of fact, you were, and it's an orangutan. Thank you very much, Mr. Orangutan, to you. Yeah, so, but it was great. It was it was great, great, great fun. Well, I guess that's better than him just leaning over and giving you one of those big old orangutan smooches that they're, you know, so profoundly known to do, so. Yes, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess it probably was. Although I, a little smooch from that cutie pie would have been all right. That Aww. was, uh, it was so sweet. It was just really cool. Mm. All in all, I just love it, love it, love it, love it. I wish they would have done another one for the experience. I really do. And God bless Tim Varney, one of the sweetest people on this planet that I've ever met. Nice. We lost him way too soon. I agree. I definitely agree. Um, yeah. Well, you have a newer movie that's coming out, and it's coming out December 27th um, of this year, 2012, and it's titled Meant to Be. And mm -hmm. this movie seems very, very heart-touching. And um, it, me reading the, the storyline on it um, really kind of set me back. And it's a lot different than the other, uh, other roles that we were talking about earlier. What made you want to do this movie? What is so special about this movie? Because it's also star-studded. Mm -hmm. It is star-studded. Um, Michael Gross, Della Reese, Dean Cain, and then Bradley Dorsey wrote and directed it. And I'm just a, a lovely uh, young actress who is 
uh, playing the girl, um, oh God, I don't know, I'm going to shoot myself, Erin, and why am I blanking on her last name? Oh, forgive me. Awesome. Um, Erin Sossaman. Yes. But yes. Such a great actress. Oh my goodness. Anyway, it, everything about this, top to bottom, I mean, from the title meant to be, it was just so meant to be, um, for me to do, uh, personally. I, First of all, I've worked with Dean on a couple different occasions, Dean Payne, and uh, I really enjoy working with him. Um, lots of fun. We're, we're like brother and sister, and it's just, we, we had a really good time. Always do. Um, and I like working with people that I like. You know, it's, it's, it just makes for a really good time, and especially if you have difficult scenes to shoot. It just makes it so fun. But this is a woman who made a mistake, um, in her life, she felt, and she really, this particular mistake really shaped her life for, um, for her whole life, uh, many years, and haunted her. One of those things that just really, um, she never forgave herself for, and she rather has a chance to redeem herself in a way, sort of indirectly, by helping another young, girl who uh, may or may not make the same mistake. We're talking about you know having an abortion um, and so she gets to kind of give her another point of view. You know, what I like about this film is that there are always two sides to every coin um, and it's a, it's a point of view and it's a really right. good, interesting one and where it, and I can't give it away, I will tell you that there is a twist in this script that is so brilliant Reading the script, I didn't see it coming. Really? Yeah. I did not see it coming. And that, when you see, and hopefully, you know, for people listening, if you see this movie, I really will be surprised if you guess what's happening. Um, and that's all I can say. Oh, but that's just, such a... Oh, come on. You oh, don't leave I'm it. telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> You're I'm leaving it hanging here. The drama. I know, oh, my I goodness. I read a review by... Uh, <laughs> I, someone did a review that said the twist is brilliant, and it really is. Um, there are kind of two storylines going on that intersect, and uh, it's just it's very, very, very heartfelt, very heartfelt. Well, the storyline so, is about a young man who searches for his mother and discovers God's plan for him. And right. is that part of the twist? That's very much part of the twist. Really that is nice. another intersecting story. Um, this young I man is that. searching. Yeah. He's searching for his birth mother, and um, I'm helping a young girl, and there's an intersection, and that's all I can say. Dum, dum, but dum. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Tune in yeah. December 27th, yeah. and see for yourself if you think it's a good thing. I like it. it. So when is the yeah. trailer coming out? Do you know? I don't. You know, I, I've tried to get as much information as possible, and it's it's, you know, it's pretty difficult, especially if it's shot sort of as an independent film, to sort right. of get all the. There's so many different sort of markets and um, and things. But I'm so sorry. One second, Indiana. What do you need to? This is. Yes. Okay. Hush now. Sorry. Oh, that's I'm, okay. I'm just... As we speak, I'm getting her her ice cream. <laughs> You're such a good these, mom. These, these, I'm going to multitask. These are the things. That, we must do. That's so, make great um, yeah, but I'm I'm really really looking forward to um to to, to that coming out, and uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting. And it, it it's totally like for me, just from a a different an actor's standpoint, it was also cool because I had very red hair at the time, and it was fun to be able to do something so different in terms of a look. Um, red hair, nice. Yeah, I did red hair for about four months. And that was uh, one of the films that I shot with it. And now my hair is chopped short, short, short into a little pixie. So just Cute. ever changing, which I love. I gotta have change, or like I said, I just get too bored. So me too. I'm the same way. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mixing it up, training, all that kind of stuff. There you go, sweetie. Um. So yeah, that's you, what's happening. Well, you're you're one of those women who actually get more beautiful. I actually I think a lot of women like this, but you're one of those women who get more beautiful with time as, as you advance in your career and doing movies and things like that. And so I did see a picture of you with red hair 
And the way your eyes just pop and your cheekbones and everything else, I was like, oh my gosh, it looks amazing with red hair. You know, wow, that's you know, really nice. Yeah, so I was like, wow, that's, that's, really, that's really cute. So that's and now cute. you tell me you've got short hair and <laughs> you like to mix it up. I'm like, no, I'm no, starting I'm to Google now. <laughs> it's back to blonde and it's really, really short and it's kind of like a crazy pixie, which means I'm going to be Tinkerbell for Halloween. Cute. Nice. So let's do it. Halloween's my Christmas time. I love Halloween. It, oh, yeah. Love, 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 love it. it. Oh, me too. I'm a fanatic, and I've already like I can't I can't wait anymore. I've already kind of started with the boxes of this stuff. Yeah. You know, I just got a. Um, there's a really great company a friend of mine owns, and it is really good. It's called Windy City Novelties. Uh-huh. You guys are listening. I swear to you, check it out because every holiday under the sun, every occasion, they have a trillion things. But forget about it for Halloween. I have a life size. Um, Wicked Witch of the West that is a big like cardboard cutout and she's in the corner of my living room and I have ruby slippers that right. I actually wore when Halloween since they were in front of her and um, yeah I'm just getting started I'm going to pull out all the all the big dogs this year oh my god I love 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 it <laughs> we go trick or treating I dress up as well I, every what year what are you going to be this year um, be? my son the last couple of years, I've been um, the Joker the, from The Dark Knight, um, the whole okay. character, the voice, the, the makeup, everything. Uh-oh. Um, okay. I love getting into character. And so this year, if my son still wants to do Batman, because we did Batman and the Joker for the last couple of years, so if he still wants to do Batman, then I'll probably be Bane, because I like, okay. to, I like to body build and work out and stuff like that. And so um, I'll maybe either I'll shave my head or I'll put on a plastic cap or something like that. And, and be wow, Bane, so. you would shave your head for Halloween? That's I would I would shave my head for my son if he wanted me to do it. So I that, would. Oh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> One other movie that you also have coming up, and it's um, a Lifetime film that you're doing a cameo in. Um, it's called Holiday Spin. Can we talk a little bit about that one? Yes, it's called Holiday Spin. I play a dance instructor. It's really about a story about um, my son who gets reunited with his father, uh, Ralph Macchio, actually, is, is playing um, oh, nice. the dad, yeah, and um, it's a cameo, so I kind of set it up. My son and I are really, really close. I'm a dance instructor. I want him to take over my dance studio. He thinks this is appalling, as most teenagers, you know, have their own ideas and mm, uh, about what they want to do, and sort of, and so what, what happens, I... Um, I go away fairly early in the story, and it, it sets up uh, my son being reunited with his father, and it's a dance film, and there's some phenomenal dancing in this movie, and it's going to be a lot of fun. That's called Holiday Spin, and uh, yes, as you said, it's Lifetime. I love Lifetime. They do really great. You know, they do people movies. Exactly, they exactly. Just, they, you know, really good stories where we actually care about the characters and uh, at the storyline. So I, I love wholesome. Lifetime. Very wholesome. I love those movies. So I'm yeah. super excited to see this one. Is this one coming out um, considering the name Holiday Spin? Is it coming out during the holidays? See, that's the math I'm doing. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking since it's called Holiday Spin, it's going to come out around the holidays. <laughs> that's the if spin it on it. If it comes out around the 4th of July, I'm going to be really <laughs> But I don't know exactly. That I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm only guessing. Maybe November, December. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only are you a super great mom with your daughter, um, you have a children's book that's coming out. Can we talk about that? Thank you. Yes. I. This is a book that I wrote so many years ago, and it is called What Do You Do If You Lose Your Lollabaloo? Oh, I love that title. It's a rhyme. It's a rhyming book for for little ones, but also really the message in the book is for everybody, and it's about trusting that that light that you have inside of you, that guide, um, and um, listening to that voice, so that children always know that they have a special light inside of them that shines, and that it's also a guide, you know, so... Um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's in the very early stages right now. We are in the artwork uh, phase or process. Rather, the illustrator has it right now. I've just been working on some amazing illustrations. Um, and then, you know, it's, this is a big learning sort of curve for me. It's all new. So there's quite the, like a big onion with so many layers to this 
to getting a book published or having one published is, right. you know, from the getting it, of course, proofed, and then you get your illustrations done, and we have to do our cover, and then, you know, final drafts and final drafts. And so we're in the art artwork phase, but hopefully within the year that will be out and ready to go. What do you do if you lose your Lullaboo? And, uh, yeah, so that's been really um, just a love. And I you, put it on the shelf for a long time. Nice. And you said that this is about um, kind of a life force, um, kind of like a guide. Is this a yeah. more of a, a, a spiritual type of love type of Yeah, book? it is. You know, it's spiritual. It's difficult. It's difficult for kids, unless you're doing a religious book, which it's not. It's very difficult to kind of, I, I think, to put it into words conceptually, spirit. Right. You know, like I exactly. said, unless you're saying... Um, and I definitely do mention God in the book, but unless it's a book about God or religion, if you're just talking about instinct and um, what, what I really wanted to stay away from kind of putting a label on it for the little ones, right. you know, just let them know that they have a voice, that they have a guide inside of them, that they have a, a special life that shines inside of them, and um, that that will always be there. Oh my goodness! Always, we could you know, so. Go, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, regardless of first day at school jitters or the dentist, or you're feeling sad, or just blue, or you're scared, whatever it is, you always have this light that shines inside of you. Your lava blue that will always be a friend to you, and it just kind of goes on this whole. Actually, it goes on. Uh, it's a journey about a child who's lost its its lava blue and can't find it. Well, whenever the so, book comes out, I want to have you back on the show to talk about this book because we could actually do a full other show of my background in parapsychology and, and spiritual beliefs and studying and stuff like that. We could literally do a whole other show on it. Oh, my so gosh. I want I to talk about this book. I would love that. Okay. Brian, I would love that. Please. That would be so great. Yeah, we really could. I've, I've pretty much devoted. I always feel like I have my – my inside me, you know, my spiritual life, and of course, very. That's the whole point is to try and enmesh it with your outside, you exactly. know, your 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 daily life. But for me, it's been an ongoing study, and will always, always be. You know, from when I get up in the morning and my program and what I do and going to bed at night, it's just so important to me. And um, you know, I certainly don't. It's not really for me. It's not religious. It's spiritual. It's just my own kind of salad from a lot of studying and a lot of different things and finding what what works and um, trying different things on and you know. So um, I I work my own kind of spiritual practice and I I try really hard to kind of put it into practice every day and um, and that's kind of the way that goes. So it inspires a lot of right. of, of what I do. Um, and don't get me wrong, you know, I've always been, there's always, I've always been kind of an extremist, you know, I have really kind of high ideals and the, the church lady on one side, minus the church, <laughs> the church lady attitude, and then there's the little demon on the other side, you know, with the little horns coming out of her head, so I have to, I have to work very hard to kind of, for myself, find the balance. You know, I've got to try and bring those two little characters together and um, be, they both need to accept each other and kind of find the balance. And I think that's pretty much for everybody, regardless of what you believe. It, it, ultimately, even if they don't know it, are searching for, and that's balance. I agree. I, I, I fully believe um, I can't get through my day sometimes unless my guides are with me. And um, mm -hmm. I know they're always around and trying to help me out and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll just stop and just be like, okay how do I get past this? And I just kind of sit and relax and then somehow or another a light will come on just like you're talking about your level blue. Your light will come on inside and you're like, okay, this is how I need to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it kind of helps you go on through your day. So I completely agree. We've still got to do another show about your book. I'm not kidding. That'd be awesome. Oh, That'd be awesome. Right. Now for some future projects and shows, um, appearances where people can come and see you, um, get book autographs, things like that, get maybe uh, DVD covers autograph. Are you going to be yeah. appearing in any places? I am going to be November 3rd and 4th. I'll be in Providence, Rhode Island, Rhode Island Convention. So 
So you have to look up. I don't have any of those details in front of me, but it is this year, November 3rd and 4th in Providence, Rhode Island. And if you look up the Rhode Island Convention Center, I believe, um, you will find this show. And I will be signing there. And, um, yeah, and there for, for saying hi to everybody. So please come on down. Um, I may be in Vegas on, I believe it's November 10th. Uh, with the Hollywood show, but it's not definite. Um, what else? And I think that's it for right now. Okay. Well, I mean, considering how busy you are doing everything, um, with the number one priority in your life being a mom, that's, that's, that's pretty good. So everybody go and check out, um, Providence in Vegas coming up in November. So I'm excited. I would, I would love to get out to Vegas to see you or Providence. Either one would be great. Well, thank you. I would too. That'd be great. And, and we need to continue our, our tweets. And uh, follow us, everybody, on Twitter. We will we will uh, keep you posted on everything too. Yeah, your websites where we have everybody to contact you. I've got EricaElenickOfficialSite dot com. Then your Twitter is um, your name, of course, and then your Facebook yes. page is just the same. Um, I do not have a Facebook page. I need to let you know that. You know, there are a lot of people on Facebook with my name. <laughs> I yeah. am okay. not. Okay. On- no, I am not wow. on Facebook. And you know what's so sad about that? When my own father, you know, was turned down to be a friend or something, it was brought to my attention. <laughs> How sad. Okay? No, I am not on Facebook. I am not on MySpace. I have my website and I have a Twitter account and that is it. Okay. So if there's anything else out there, it is not me. Well, thank you for saying that because I need yes. to go unlike that page. Well, no, I still want to like it because I'm a fan. And, you know, and if it's a fan <laughs> site, and that's all that great, too. So it's, if it's, it's a fan good site, stuff. yes. If it's someone impersonating, then it's not good. And that's pretty much been my, from what I've been told, there have been some pretty awful things. And it's been people pretending to be me, which is so not nice. Yeah. I just, you know, it, and it takes so much. I looked into kind of trying to shut that down. Because a fan site is different. It's just much appreciated. And, and, and it's an honor, yeah, exactly. you know, to... I greatly appreciate that. But when people are actually speaking as you pretending to be, it's just kind of really creepy. Yeah. Huh. For lack of a better way to say it, it's just creepy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just stop it, please. <laughs> okay. Well, with everything going on, um, everybody go check out her her website and her Twitter account then. Um, and i like to ask you, do you have any final thoughts you would like for everyone to know? Yeah. You know what? One of the most valuable things that I could say, I think, that I've learned for myself and also extremely difficult, but if there's one thing that you take in ever in your life, it is simply to stay in the moment. Practice that for five minutes at a time and see how difficult it is. To actually stay in the moment, not being in the past, not looking into the future, not even, you know, what am I going to do for dinner? What are we going to do here? What are we going to do tomorrow, next week? Stay in the moment and watch how your experience changes. If you can remember that, and that will take you so far, when you're scared, when something hard is going on, when you're challenged, stay out of the future and stay in the moment and everything will be all right. You will have a better better quality of life if you can practice that it's impossible to do it all day but really just try to stay in the moment that is i am definitely practicing that myself so that's that's a thought i think i would leave i like that stay in the moment that's beautiful very poetic well thank you for having me on oh thank you so much i really do appreciate it and on behalf of everyone here at the show all the producers all the editors all the people who work um behind the scenes around the around the world help with the show out all the stations who air it um thank you so much for coming on to our show and again i'd love to have you back to talk about your book whenever it comes out and i'm i'd look forward to uh to just reading it myself and to reading it to my kids oh thank you so much and thank you to all of the lovely people as well that you just mentioned for making all of this possible it's uh, i am it's an honor to be here and i'm very grateful so all right i will talk to you soon then let's keep each other posted uh, definitely or you have a very beautiful night you too. All right, all right. Bye. Please welcome our musical guest, Heather Lee, with her endearing song, Second Chances. Strung out junkie on the street, not the kind of guy you'd want to meet. But he's been a No more. 
three An empty hole where memories that should have filled her up inside but when her finger got a ring She couldn't keep from wondering uh, Who was gonna walk her down the aisle So with trembling hair on she picked up the from our sponsors. At Tyler Gifts, we do customized monogramming and embroidery. We can monogram anything from a simple one name on a bib for a baby to a customized logo on a company shirt. We can make gifts for your wedding entourage and gifts for your friends. Label your children's items for school and put names on jerseys for sports. If you have items of your own you want to monogram and embroidered, we can do that. Taylor Gifts are sewn with high quality thread on a professional embroidery machine. So go to the website www.taylorgifts.net, call 251-391-4354, Email sales at tailorgifts.net, visit us at ETSY, and Facebook us. We are ready for your orders. Welcome to WROM, Realms of Music Radio and Social Network. We support independent artists and talk shows, hosting a large discussion forum and an artist gallery. We also have a large social network combining the best of Facebook and MySpace into one. So make sure you submit your music to us and create a profile to promote yourself today. That's realmsofmusic.com, the best of music radio. The Ghost Tales Television Network, GTN. GTN is designed to give the paranormal TV and filmmaking community the opportunity to showcase their talents and creations. If you believe you have what it takes to create your very own TV show and or short film and you would like the opportunity to showcase your creations, you may contact us at ghosttalestv at gmail.com or call 901-377-7166 for more details. Make sure you visit ghosttalestv.com. GTN, America's Paranormal Superstation. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com your alternative to the grind of internet and FM radio. When we say diversity in programming, we mean it. Lots of stations brag, throw out a hype, and pad their numbers. Well, we don't. Accept no limitations. When you truly want awesome 24-hour radio, tune in to Jackalope and rock your routine. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com. Thank you for listening to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Watley. Hope you have an amazing weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next time when another story begins. Until then, love and life.